Today, uh, the missus has uh, a work meeting tonight that she cannot miss, so uh, I just kind of stuck around local last night. I didn't video anything last night. It just wasn't really even worth it. I ended up, there was a bunch of empties on the load board coming out of Fayetteville. Um, went to Fayetteville, it's about a two hour drive down there and went to Fayetteville. Booked one when I got down there and there was an empty available, which kind of sucked. I didn't really, it was going from Fayetteville to Charlotte. We wasn't paying really a whole lot of nothing, man. It was like 200 something bucks. It's less, way less than $2 a mile. So um, I, I booked it knowing that, you know, I was having some, some issues, some mechanical issues with, I say mechanical, electrical issues with the truck. Um, didn't really want to go to Charlotte, but was willing to, you know, the truck was going to do what it was going to do, whether it's, you can have no lights on on these things. It can break down on your side of the road no matter what, but, um, they had a, it was yellow tag, and this is something new to me that, I, that I've learned. Um, a yellow tag basically means that there's a, something that is defective with the trailer that it makes it unsafe to take down the road. And so I pulled over and sat in the parking lot to the side and, you know, out of nowhere, I just get a, a text message saying that my load was ready, my trailer, my empty was ready or whatever. And so I went to go hook up to it and I was, you know, I was like, this trailer's been sitting here the whole time. You know, let me go ahead and ask the lady inside. So I walked in, asked her, hey, is this the trailer that was yellow tag? Cause nobody's brought anything in and this one just popped up. I still had, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, 35, 40 minutes left before my departure time. So I would have, I would have been way ahead of time, but and she was like, no, that was a different one. I was like, well, that one's been sitting there the whole time. She was like, well, you know, that was yours. I was like, all right, you know, appreciate your help, whatever. Walked out to the truck, backed up under it, and the glad hand, the glad hand for on the trailer side, it's got like a little L bracket that keeps when you lock them in, it you know it locks it in place and keep, keeps it all hooked up together. And on the supply line, you got red and blue. Red is emergency line. The blue is the supply line. Uh, the the supply line when I pushed it in, the L bracket was rusted and broken off, and it was separated you know pretty wide. For what it was what it needed to be anyway and when you pushed it on to lock it in it just spun right back off the other side and so i put in the trailer inspection you know when you pick up a trailer loaded empty it doesn't matter you have to you know inspect that trailer for amazon purposes and if there's anything wrong you take pictures if it is a, a, a option at the bottom that i forget exactly what it says but you know, it's basically like there's a reported issue with the trailer kind of sort of deal. And go in and I, there's two different ones, put remarks on it, or you can put that it's defective. And, you know, I put that it was defective and in the notes that that, that trailer needed a new glad hand and that it was defective to the point that made it unsafe to take, you know, off the lot. And um, I put in a call to ROC and I also went and told I went and told the shipping clerk inside that, you know, hey, <laughs> I ain't trying to get out of something. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take the trailer, but it's defective. And I've already talked to him um, twice. I said at this point, because this was a little later on, I said at this point, I ain't got but a few minutes left. So I got like eight, nine minutes left to my departure time. You know, last time I talked to him, they said, you know, come in here and talk to you. I don't know if you want to yellow tag this thing or if you want me to do whatever. She was like, you know, if you can't take it, you can't take it. I said, well, they put in a work order for somebody to come get it, you know, but my departure time's coming up. And if they're not here within the next eight minutes, I'm, you know, I'm leaving anyway. And she was like, all right, well, I'll put it in the system. Which she never put it in the system. 
So I called him back at departure. I still haven't heard from or seen the mechanic that's supposed to be coming on, on you know, on the, to fix it from the work order. So I called him back and said, hey, my departure time's here. And they gave me what is called a verbal release and sent me on my way. She said, since it's past your departure, and it, by the time I'm, I got them on the phone, it was 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, past departure time. And so they, they said, hey, you know, we're going to verbally release you to go on about your business. It'll get canceled shortly. And again, it's a two hour trip back to the house. And I was coming back home anyway. And I get into Greenville and I still hadn't seen it get canceled yet. So I called her back and I said, hey, this is what the deal was. Uh, can you go ahead and cancel it? She was like, yeah, it should have been canceled by now anyway. So she went ahead and she did that for me. Um, and I reached out to my mechanic, let him know what time I'd be home. He lives, you know, I mean, I could, throw, I, I could definitely hit a golf ball to his house. But, you know, he's a hop, skipping a jump and away from me. I mean, he might be an eighth of a mile from the house. And uh, <laughs> he come over and we got to messing around and, he, you know, Watching the gauges and, and what's happening was my water temperature gauge would go all the way around to six o'clock. It would sit there, it was past the max amount and it, the light would come on, but it never gave me a reading to shut down the engine or anything. It, you know, I knew it was mechanical. I mean, I knew, I knew it was electrical or something. And we ended up finding a sensor, the engine, te engine coolant temperature sensor is what's acting up. We unplug it, plug it back in, and it went back to normal, so it fixed it. So today, I am, I've already reached out to Kennedy's tractor, tractor supply, and I got Corey over there working on, you know, trying to find a part if they got it in stock. And if they don't have it, we're gonna call White's International over here across town in Winterville, see if they got it. I'm pretty sure they have it. It's just a sense that it's not super expensive. And, um, we're going to replace it, be done with it. You know, that that sensor controls fuel regulation. It controls fuel injection. It controls, you know, obviously the fan, what temperature it cuts on, it cuts off. It, you know, it controls so much. And it's okay to drive it around you know the way it is but you're gonna get worse fuel mileage the fans gonna cut on more times than it should and you know it's, it's just that sort of deal and so what we're gonna do today is is, is ride around and, and find that part but um right now I'm getting ready to work on editing you know another video which will be you know at the time of me recording this it'll be already out so um Anyway, that's that's the update. Again, it's Wednesday, December tw December December twelve, uh, Tuesday, December twelfth, um, nine thirty-five in the morning, man. In the fast-paced world of Amazon Relay carriers and truck drivers, staying connected and getting immediate support is crucial. That is where the Group Me app comes in. Introducing the brand new Group Me community exclusively for Amazon Relay carriers and truck drivers. This dedicated group chat has been created as a lifeline for drivers, connecting them quickly wherever they need help, advice, or just a friendly ear while out on the road. Imagine being stuck at a facility unsure of what to do next or needing instant guidance on requesting a callback from ROC. With the Group Me app, help is just a few taps away. Whether it's navigating the app's features such as inputting important trip notes or adjusting timestamps, or seeking advice on the best approach upon entering a facility, the GroupMe chat is a reliable source of information and support. We understand that big companies can often make communication challenging, but with GroupMe, we're breaking those barriers and keeping drivers on the go, ensuring they never miss a beat. The real-time interaction and collaboration within the GroupMe community mean that drivers can stay connected with their peers sharing invaluable insights, overcoming hurdles, and keeping the wheels turning. Join the revolution in communication for Amazon Relay carriers and truck drivers. Download GroupMe and be a part of the fastest growing support network on the road. GroupMe, driving connections, empowering drivers. Download now.